These are the six steps I followed in my 20s to help me be extremely successful. Each of these steps is like their own rule, and if you follow them step by step, you will be more successful in your 20s and prepare yourself for your 30s, 40s, and beyond. The biggest problem the most people, especially in their 20s, they have no idea what they want to do. You go to school and you learn a whole bunch of random topics that don't actually help you, and then you get put out in the real world to go do something, and most people, because they don't have any direction, they're just looking like, well, where can I get a job? Where can I find something that will pay me right now? And because of that, they give up like their hopes and their dreams and things that actually excite them and they're passionate about. I think one of the biggest tragedies is when somebody's 65, 70 years old and they're retiring and they've been miserable the whole time because they were doing something they didn't love. So in your 20s, the first thing I'd be asking yourself is like, what do you actually want to do? What's the thing that fires you up, the thing that gets you excited where every morning you wake up and you're like, I gotta go do this today. This is insane that I get paid to experience this and to do this for my living, for my career. And then there's a quote that I love that says, if you want to be successful in life, all you need to do is to model those who are already successful. And that quote came from Tony Robbins. He is the biggest influencer in the world right now. He's been running events now for 40 plus years, changing millions and millions of people's lives. But before he was ever Tony Robbins, the first thing Tony did is he found someone to model to be successful. In fact, here's a picture I found of Tony Robbins when he was 23 years old sitting in a Jim Rohn seminar. If you don't know who he is, he was the Tony Robbins of the 1980s. Starting tomorrow, what are you going to do? that'll make a change in your life's direction. And so when Tony decided, I want to be someone who's going to change people's lives, he said, who's already doing it? Jim Rohn's doing it. So Tony was sitting in Jim Rohn's seminars. Tony volunteered. He started working for Jim Rohn. He was his number one sales trader. He was his number one speaker. He became part of that. But the first thing is he figured out what did he actually want to do, and he found somebody who was already doing it. And that's rule and step number one. Here's the big challenge of life. You can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. Let's say again, if you wanted to be in the speaking industry, like Tony Robbins probably went to Jim Rohn. He's like, for Jim Rohn to be successful, he's got to sell tickets to the event. He's got to have speakers. He's got to have promoters. He's got to have marketers. He's got to have people doing sales in the back of the room. He's got to have people creating courses and content. Like he saw all the pieces that made that business successful. Like if you were to come into my world, like what are all the components of success for a business like mine to be successful? Well, I gotta have a sales funnel, I have to have a sales message, right? I gotta drive traffic, I gotta have copywriters, I've gotta have people doing email marketing, I have people doing social, YouTube, like there's all these different skill sets that are involved for me to be successful inside this business. So I wanna look at the business I want to be part of, looking at the thing I want to be my career, and start looking what are all the different components that make that successful. Now, you don't have to master any of them yet, but you have to understand all of them. Because if I'm going to go to a Tony Robbins event and be like, I want to work with Tony, I want to do something like he's doing, I need to understand how all the different pieces work. So I'm going to look at those five or eight or ten different things that make Tony successful. I want to understand them. So what I like to do is I go through what I call like binge days. Where I'm going to say, okay, like I know that for somebody to be successful online, they've got to understand how to build a funnel. I'm going to spend a day binging everything on how to build a funnel. I'm going to write, if there's a book about it, I'm going to go read one or two books. I'm going to listen to every single podcast on it. I'm going to go and like try to find an expert in there and see if I can get on a call and interview that person. So I have a really good understanding of like what goes into being successful in this component. Right? And then if I'm like, okay, next component is that someone's gotta be good at copywriting or social media, or they gotta be good at YouTube or whatever that is, and pick the next thing and I'm gonna spend a day binging. And this is not something you're spending a month or a year binging, it's just going deep for one day so you get a step ahead of everybody else. Now this brings us to step number four, and this is where it starts getting to be really fun. For me, when I got started in business, I started looking around at what people were doing. I realized there were a lot of different steps, right? Traffic generation, copywriting, funnel building, phone sales, live events, all that kind of stuff. But for me, the thing that was the most exciting was funnels. The next thing, I started talking about website, talking about getting traffic, and, and I was like, oh my gosh. I started seeing the concept was very similar to the direct mail. When I wanted to learn copywriting, I remember there was a copywriter I was studying who is a legend in the copywriting space. His name is Gary Halbert. He said, if you want to become a really good copywriter, what you need to do is go and find sales letters written by the greatest copywriters of all time. And he said, don't just read them and study them. He's like, literally get out a pad of paper and hand write it. Like write the headline that they wrote. And then write the intro copy and the lead and then the sub headlines and everything. He said, if you spend three or four hours actually physically hand writing out the sales letter, you're going to know it at a deeper level, understanding why they use every single word because you've had to physically write out every single one. It's not just reading a book and dabbling. It's going deep and really trying to understand the people who are the best in the world. What do they do and how do they do it differently? Guess who's here? Steve Larson, when he came into my world and he wanted to become a funnel builder and he wanted to learn how to speak from stage and he was working for me. He told me at night he would take the presentations. He'd see me on a stage like this, talking and speaking. He would literally take my presentations. He'd go home at night and he would watch them. Then he would stand up. He would practice himself speaking in front of a mirror. So he could learn, like, if I'm going to captivate a stage and stand in front of a huge audience, like, how do I do that in a way that's going to be successful? He'd never done it before. And eventually he took that and was able to create his own version of it. But it gave him the ability to look at what someone was doing.
doing, successfully modeling it so you can understand it at a deeper level. This is how you master skill set. Okay, let's put our hands together for Steve Larson! <laughs> So for you, what I want you to do is identify of all the things that make somebody successful in that business, what's the thing that you're most passionate about, the thing that you want to go deep on, the thing that, man, if you could wake up every day just thinking about it and reading about it and talking about it and, and like trying to master it, it would fire you up more than anything. Yeah, I'm going to get nerdy. Is that all right? Yeah. That is all right because nerds get paid. All righty. I remember when I was going to launch my coaching business, I was like, I want to teach people how to start businesses online. I built my own businesses, but I never coached somebody through it. I found my dream customer. For me, it was a guy named Drew Canoli. He launched a company called Fit Life TV. And I came to Drew and I was like, hey, I've launched a supplement company. I know you're thinking about launching a supplement company. I would love to show you exactly how to do this. And so I flew out on my own dime, went out to his offices. I sat there with his team, mapped out the funnel for their new supplement funnel, helped them build it, helped them launch it. And from that, they became very successful. And I was able to take that story and leverage it to get other clients as well. We were blown away with the results that we received. You know, we weren't expecting it to be this big. A couple other really good examples, Todd Dickerson, who's my co-founder in ClickFunnels. When I first met Todd, he started working for me and he literally worked for me for free for over a year. Didn't charge me once. He was serving, he was helping, he was doing things. And eventually I was like, man, this guy is so helpful. Like if I'm not careful, I'm going to lose him. And I actually went to him. I was like, hey, can I pay you something? He's like, sure, whatever you think's fair. And then over time, I was like, I, he, man, he is so valuable. I gotta give him some more money. So I gave him some more money. And eventually, when we had the idea for ClickFunnels, I assumed that Todd was gonna be my employee working on the business. And he came back and said, I don't wanna do this as an employee, I wanna do it as your partner. And because he'd given me so much value for so many years, for so long, the only logical thing for me to say was yes. And Todd became my business partner. He now owns half of ClickFunnels and we've built a huge empire together. But it all started with him coming and literally working for free. So you can leverage that skill set to partner with your dream people. And if that doesn't work and maybe you're not able to partner with them for, for whatever reason, now you've got this skill set that's so great and now you can go out there and build a company around your skill set. Okay, a lot of people look at me and said, Russell, you're really good at building funnels. Like, you're not gonna be the CEO of a company, you're a funnel builder. I was like, yeah, but I think I'm the best funnel builder that's ever lived. And so I started a company where I was the best funnel builder and then I hired all the other people around me and from there we were able to build an empire. <laughs>I want to drive home is that in your 20s, your job and your goal is not to go and build a huge company, a big brand, and a big social media following. Like, those things are great, but the number one thing you can be doing in your 20s is mastering one skill set. So it'll give you the ability to write your own paycheck, to open your own doors, become partners with your dream clients, or to start and grow your own businesses as well. And it'll give you the ability through your 30s and your 40s and beyond to have the empire that you dreamed of. But right now in the 20s, focus 100% on mastering one skill set and becoming the best in the world at the thing that you love to do.